September 1899. After several years of peace, the United States started to build relationships with the other world powers. But not all were happy and content. A growing new danger has arisen in the Far East. Feeling provoked by the presence of the U.S. fleet in the East China Sea, the Chinese Empire has steadily developed a disdain for the U.S. However, the U.S. has not been idle these last few years. Developing new technologies and better, stronger ships, the U.S. is ready for anything the Chinese can throw their way. War is inevitable. What is up guys, welcome back to another awesome episode of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. In this episode, as you can see, we start off here with a update. This is version 1.5.0.1. This is actually a little quick patch to the main update where they've actually added a couple of awesome things, a bunch of new ships, fix uh, some bugs. They added a little mini map, apparently. I haven't seen it yet. This is my first time loading in since I did it, but this right here, Kind of concerning to me. Old campaign saves and old ship designs are incompatible. This is mandatory to clean up shared designs manually. So I don't know if our campaign is uh, screwed up or not. So as you can see here, there's lots of like new cruiser designs and that sort of thing. They also added, like I said, a mini map. There's a bunch of info here. They got new guns. They added a bunch of stuff. They got some balances and gameplay improvements here. Just a bunch of different things. Got some fixes. And then here's the mini map thing again. So I'm going to say don't show again. We are going to try and continue this campaign. Go. All right, good. It looks like the campaign is actually working. As you can see right up here, we do have a mini map. And it's now September 1899. A few years have passed since the last episode. I have played a little bit. And the Chinese Empire is now ready for war. And uh, I did nothing to really provoke them. They are coming after me. And our options here are our patience is over. Uh, we must go to war. And although it's cowardice from our side, we must comply and pay them. And that's just not going to happen. We'll take a look at the rest of our tabs up here as we can. But right now, I think with our only option is to go to war. So there we go. We are now at war. Take a look at the politics tab really quick. So a lot of things have changed. Uh, we were we're allies with the, the British. As you can see here, we're way up high. The British have actually been knocked down a peg. The Soviet Union used to be the Russian Empire, and they, now they are the Soviet Union. I did actually have a um, alliance with them, the French, and uh, Japan. I've had uh, alliances with all, th all three of them of them and everything was great and then they just started canceling alliances and then uh, China is going to war it says negative 99 but I could have swore we just said we're at war maybe we're not but we're really close uh, as you can see so the Austro-Hungarian Empire they don't really care for us too much there's China the Germans they don't care for us the Italians they don't care for us at all uh, the Spanish of course still don't like us too much and Japan down there at the bottom, uh, they kind of like us a little bit. I've been doing everything I can to improve my relations with these other countries. And for example, I kind of wanted Russia on my side to go to war with China. So that's what I've been kind of working on, um, bringing them back up because I'd rather have the Soviet Union on my side. Finances, take a look. We got $683 million over negative 40. Uh, per month. We are max on just about everything except for crew training. And we can see our budget, our research. Somebody mentioned in the comments section that uh, uh, adding the priorities is only really useful for like getting ready to refit or redesign a ship where you want to have that whatever it is uh, included in the refit. So they said things will come up as we get you know, as time goes by, we don't need to assign the priorities. So we can leave them free, and that'll actually just kind of like all boats float together kind of a thing. So I guess that's how we're going to do it. So I took those two out because we don't need them right now, and I don't really see other than mines, which I don't care about. Um, 
but this one here is three months away, so we might as well keep it. Ship design, let's take a look at this because some things did change. As we can see here, we have a couple of new ships. I'm trying to rem remember what ships were new. I know I did some refit. Uh, we got the dagger. The I, I think we started with the... We just had these ones in the last episode. So I, I designed the Idaho class, the dagger class, and the we did a refit on the evil class battleship, the Washington class battleship, and the torpedo boat stiletto. So let's take a look at each one of these independently. We'll go here. Now we can take a look at it right here. This is the Idaho class uh, battleship, but it, you can't really see it. You can't really get a good appreciation for what this is. So we're going to go into the view screen here. All right, here is the Idaho class battleship. It is a beast. This ship displaces 12,000 tons at a cost of $50 million, build time of 15 months, top speed of 20 knots. So it actually moves through the water quite quickly. And for its guns, it's got three 10 inch guns, double barrels. It's got four six inch guns. That's these ones here on the sides. It's got 14 five inch guns. That's these casemate guns down here along the front. I mean, that just looks so mean. Look at that. Like, see that barreling down at you. And of course we have six five inch guns. Those are kind of peppered throughout on top of the turrets here. So yeah, this thing is a floating, just amazing ship. And we can see we've got all these funnels on here trying to get that engine efficiency. And that's of course gives us that top speed. So there we have it. This is the Idaho class battleship. I next designed the uh, dagger class cruiser see here it's very similar to the mobile class cruiser but it's got a little bit more uh oomph i would say it displaces 2,000 tons at a cost of 7.6 million dollars the top speed of 20.5 knots and it, for armament it has four five inch guns it has four three inch guns it has eight underwater torpedo tubes and 25 mines so this ship can actually um, lay some mines. I see it's also overweight. I'm not sure uh, how I was able to get it there uh, because we didn't change anything. So like nothing has been edited or changed and it let me continue it. So somehow along the way we gained 103 tons. So I'm gonna say we didn't see that and move on. Okay, here we go. Here is the evil class refit and see our 10 inch guns got a little bigger. Five inch guns also got a little bigger. We also got the latest and greatest in all of our technology. We got new steam engines. We got a balanced rudder. Uh, the rudder, I had a conversation with somebody else in the comment section about this rudder. If you remember back, uh, we have balanced rudder, we have unbalanced rudder, and a, uh, a semi balanced rudder. If you have an unbalanced rudder, it's going to slow you down as you turn, and that is a good thing for ships that actually move pretty quick through the water you can crank it hard over and that'll actually bring the ship to almost a near stop. It'll slow it way down. So it's great for evading torpedoes. They have a torpedo coming in. You crank the, the rudder over, it slows you way down, starts turning you. And that speed reduction will make you miss the torpedo as it goes by your bow. So it's a good thing, but this ship doesn't move quite that fast. We got a top speed of 20 knots now. And uh, there you can see the rest of the armament. Moving on now, uh, we have the Battleship Washington. This is another refit. So as you can see here, we got the big guns again. And it also keeps making this uh, funnel red, like it doesn't fit, but it does, obviously. So again, just lay some grace and technology as we, we got it. Uh, and yeah, so there you can see the armament. It also moves at a top speed of 15.5 knots, so it's not very fast compared to the Evil class or the Idaho class, but it does pack quite the wallop. It is also our most expensive, and thus is kind of our export yacht. All right, and here is our little stiletto torpedo boat. Basically, the only really thing that got upgraded here, I believe, was just the technology as far as the engines and stuff go, uh, which makes it a little bit faster. We can now do a 25 knots, and we have the dual torpedo launcher there all right so that is it that is our refits and our new ships that we have designed let's take a look at our fleet we will sort them by type again 
This uh, screen that pops up is kind of annoying when you're just kind of looking, so I'm just going to keep my mouse kind of over here on the right side of the screen. So as you can see here, the evil class is at C. I don't remember exactly what I was doing with it. The Oregon class again is at C. The Washington class is at C. We did build one of Virginia class uh, battleship in the last episode, and there it is in East Asia, ready to go to war. We also have a couple of the new Idaho class battleships down here. This one is building in 14 months. Come down to our cruisers. We have a bunch of these mobile class cruisers still in service. And then we built a bunch more of these dagger class cruisers as well. Then we have our refit stilettos and that sort of thing. I did notice that on the ship design when you try, or uh, which one was it? Yeah, we want to build a ship. Say you want to build the latest and greatest uh, evil class battleship. We can't just simply build it. We have to uh, build an evil class battleship, build the ship and then refit it almost immediately. And I don't think that's accurate. Now, I don't know because I'm not a real uh, into ship design and, and historical ship design and, and procedures and that sort of thing, but I'm pretty certain that once a ship has been refitted and you still have the designs you wish to make that ship, you probably just build it with all the new latest and greatest right at, right at the at the gate, you know. So I'm guessing that's an issue, uh, but it's obviously by design. So they want you to spend the time here and then remember to try and refit it. So as we come up here, you can see I've already refit our two evil class ships. I've already refit our Washington class ships, and that's really about it. Our mobile class uh, cruisers, they will be refit once they're built. And that's where I ran into that problem. And then of course we don't have any submarines. All right, so where are we now? Let's come over here because this is where all the magic fun is happening. We have our main fleet right here. We got the New Hampshire, Virginia, and, and Quincy, the uh, light cruiser Quincy. Uh, and it's, I sent it up the Yellow Sea. I'm kind of poking that bear a little bit by just kind of showing my, my sea control here, right? I'm also bringing in almost every single ship we have that is available. We got a lot of uh, battleships moving into the vicinity. We got the South Carolina coming in. We got the Washington and the uh, light cruiser Tacoma coming in. I put them all right here. We also have some ships here at the Indianapolis there and Richmond is there. That is our Virginia class battleship. That is that new one that is apparently overweight. So hopefully it doesn't sink like right away because that would be bad. And hopefully we go to war with China somewhat soon because I am itching to get into a new fight, to be perfectly honest with you. Oh, I also sent uh, this fleet. There it is, the Evil and the Idaho and the Oregon, along with some escorts. I'm sending them into the Mediterranean. The reason I'm doing that is because Italy, again, is not happy with us. And I'm going to... They're actually at war. Was that, were they at war with uh, British? No. No, oh, the Hungarians were at war with British. So, and we are allies with them. So, I don't know why that's not uh, lit up for us. But, yeah, we are allies with them. So, I was going there to support my friends, the British. And to also piss off the Italians just a little more. <laughs> okay, next turn. Fleets affect bilateral relations as follows. I'm pissing off the Austro-Hungarians a little more. I'm guessing... Oh, that's in the Caribbean. Really? Okay. Um, so a serious incident has occurred which involves the Chinese Empire. They think that we assassinated one of their politicians. And how should we respond? They are asking for trouble. We should never accept this accusation. Prepare for war if that's what they want. Uh, we get naval prestige. We lose 30 relations with China and we get plus two unrest. And it says a war with China, China should be avoided at this time. We can accept their demand, which will also pacify our own people here. The press becomes silent about this case. We pay a lot of money. No, guess what? We're going to war. Soviet Union is overspending, and here we go. We are now at war. So the United States with British uh, Empire, we increased 15 points. The United States with France, we went down 10 points. They apparently didn't like us. We went down with 20 points with Germany. Soviet Union down 11. Uh-oh. 
The Italians negative 14. We're just making everybody upset. Negative 13 with the Hon also Hungarians. Uh, Japan, they like us a little more. And the Spanish state is negative 17. So that's not great. We simply ignored the Spaniards. Uh, our effect to improve relations with the Soviet Union have failed. Okay. And... The, oh yeah, the Congo. They're at war down here in the Congo. All right. So we're going to move this fleet in here. Up just like so. So the Austro-Hungarians in the Caribbean were upset and angry with us because of our presence here. And you know what? I don't have much in the way of shipping here. That might be a problem. We got the battleship Georgia. Let's see. Do we have any other? Yeah, we're going to move these two ships. We'll move them down to uh, Gitmo. Give us a little bit more of a presence there. Anything in Pensacola, we do not. Charleston, got that little boat there. What about in Cologne? No, nope, nothing there. Oh, we did also get this uh, Nicaragua. Our army took over Nicaragua as well. So, our army uh, going after Central America there. Kind of funny. Okay, let's check out. I just, there we go. That's kind of cool, that mini-map. We can just kind of click it and move it around. Nice. Okay, so we are now uh, at war with the Chinese Empire, which is fantastic news. Um, let's... Okay, so we need 100,000 tons of Southeast Asia and East Asia. Oh, we are there. Look at that. Nice. So I see this, sh this uh, little group right here. Let's go see if we can... We're going to move this fleet up to engage. There we go. We're going to move this one. Uh, we'll move it right here. Perfect. We'll keep the Indianapolis there and the Richmond there. And let's head to the west coast. See if we got... Uh, I don't want to take all of our shipping away from uh, the west coast here. Because the Chinese, they have a formidable, very formidable fleet. Let's take a look. But here we are. We are pissing off the world. Except for the British. They love us. Let's take a look at the Chinese fleet. They are a little bit down from us. They have 55 active ships, 44 of which are battleships, 12 cruisers, armored cruisers, 20 light cruisers, and 19 torpedo boats. They have a good fleet. And they also have a good GDP, which means that they can start building as well. So, oh, and that's why the French lost favor with us. Interesting. Well, let's just try and reprove relations with the French. See how that works. Finances. We're at plus five million. We're going to crank up our budget just a little bit for our training. There we go. Research. Here we are in the research. We got armor forging coming along in two months. Ship design. Nothing has changed. And fleet. Nothing should have changed. However, let's build some new ships because I got a feeling that we are going to need them. So let's see. What should we build? I'm thinking I'd like to build a couple more of these Idaho class battleships. Build. Uh, let's build four of them. And let's see. I would like some more of the. Oh, let's build the stiletto. No, not the stiletto. Um, the dagger. There it is. Dagger class. Uh, light cruiser. We'll build that ship. Let's build like eleven of them. There we go. Ship is overweight. Oh no! I can't build any of them. Oh, that's a bummer. Let's see. We have to maybe fix that now. We have to shed 103 tons. Let's see how we can do that. I'm thinking that we can take it away from our main belt, maybe? Oh, we have to refit it. <laughs> oh, I hate... I don't like doing that. I would like at least one inch on the main belt there. One inch on the main deck. Oof, duh. We... 29 tons. Come on. That's not taking any weight away. Drop down our amount that we carry. Um. Okay, there we go. Now we got some... More wiggle room, we can add a little more to that. Oop. There we go. Save design. The roll is way up there, but I think it'll be okay. Exit. Okay, so, but now, I want to build this dagger class. Build ship, and it's overweight. So if I do this one, I can't build it. 
I refit it? Uh, I can refit these ones, guess, seed. But I can't build this one because it's overweight, which is a major, major bummer. Darn it. So let's build, I guess, the mobile class. The Duluth class, they're, they're not very good. They're really expensive. And compared to the mobile class, mobile class outclasses them. So we're not building any of those. We don't own any of those. So we're, we're just doing the mobile class. So let's build a couple of those. We'll do like 11 of them. Build. And as soon as they're built, we'll have to refit them. Okay, so there we go. We are building a bunch of ships. And we are also refitting them. It's going to take about a month to get those done. So a turn. It's going to take seven months to get the rest of these done. Except for our battleships. Which are where? Oh, they're right there. So our battleships right here, will they'll take 15 months. Let's go ahead and set those ports. There we go. I put two of them in Manila to be built. One in Cologne and one in Balboa, Central America down there. Since I did notice that was kind of undefended. That's a very strategic location. So I'll set these ones next. Okay, there we go. So I got a couple of them being built here in Seattle, San Francisco, San Diego. Uh, one in Guam, one in Pensacola, Tampa, Norfolk, and Portland, Maine. So I kind of picked the ports that don't have any ships currently in them. And then uh, obviously on the West Coast. So there we have it. Now let us take a look at the finances since we just uh, spent a whole bunch of money. We're down 18 million. And uh, yeah, oof -da. Research. We've got two months to go on there. Other than that, nothing has changed. Special machinery is coming on board. Uh, hydraulic steering gear researching is 67%. It's going to be done 13 months. Long, long time. So if I put a priority in there, uh, then it's down to three months. So, But I was told to trust the system, to not put a priority there. That's what we'll try for now. We'll see how it works out. I do listen to your guys' comments. So if you guys have any more tips and tricks... Please do not be shy and share. I appreciate it. Okay, so we got ships moving around. Everything looks great. Let's go to November. All right, the Gulf of Alaska now, uh, because of our presence there, apparently that's pissing off the Hungarians. Why? I have no idea, but they're angry with us. And I don't know, and I don't care. War has erupted between Japan and the Chinese Empire. Uh, so our relations with Japan went up some more. Woohoo. And of course, the Chinese already hate our guts more than you can possibly know. So, <laughs> so there we have it. Uh, Japan is now at war with China. And they lost five transport ships. Great. Our relationship with France has improved but Japan tried to increase relationships with us but they failed that's okay Japan I got you let's go to politics really quick we can see we're still in the fourth position we are all the way scrolled up France is number one let's scroll down here to Japan Japan on the very very bottom down here we're gonna go ahead and improve relations with them look at our finances we're minus 25 million per turn which is not great Research, armor forging is coming along one month to go. And now we have cruiser design in four months. So that's great. I'm not seeing anything else other than mines. Ship design, nothing has changed. Fleet, nothing has really changed other than just bringing, uh, oh, I guess, no, something did change, didn't it? We actually have a refit uh, mobile classes. So let's go to ship design really quick and we will do this one. Refit. Hey, I guess we don't get to refit those ones. Which ones were were they that we could refit? Oh, that's okay. I'm sorry. That we actually finished refitting them. And so they were somewhere. I don't remember which ones they were. That's okay. We'll take a look at the map. We'll click around. So, but here, I would like to see about. Uh, well, can we. Key, key long. I'm going to start taking some territories here. So let's see. Politics. We'll go down to, or up rather, to here. Naval invasion. Choose a province. Ooh, hang on. I thought I could do Key long. Formosa. Or my options again. Formosa. Okay, here we go. So, yep, we're going to take that one on. Yep. 
Let's do it. I see they have a fleet here. Two battleships, seven heavy cruisers, 13 light cruisers, and nine torpedo boats. That's a hell of a fleet. Let's see. Here is our fleet. One of them. Another one. And this one here. Let's bring this. Well, I'm going to keep that one off the coast of China right here, eastern China. This one will come down and take care of business down here, I hope. Let's see. Manila has got the Indianapolis. Guam has the Richmond. That is really it. Okay. Let's take a look at the western seaboard here. Nome. Just got a couple torpedo boats. Dutch Harbor. We've got torpedo boats. Anchorage. We've got the namesake cruiser. Uh, I'm going to send it down here. Go. Back to the west coast. Seattle. Tallahassee. We're going to leave it there. San Francisco's got the Astoria. San Diego has got two of them. That's fine. We'll leave them there. We did put a couple of ships uh, in, in Guantanamo Bay to help secure the Caribbean. And of course, we have our Mediterranean fleet here that has got a lot of ships. But it's our only fleet in this entire region. So let us... We're just going to cruise. Move. We're going to cruise right up to the... Uh, Eel right there of Italy. That ought to make people happy. Okay, I'm gonna move this fleet uh, over here. Try and block them if they want to come down and try and take the Philippines from us. Uh, we can take care of business. It shows them moving up this way, I think. It's kind of hard to cover my mouse over. There's a lot going on right there. Uh, right there. Yeah, so they're moving up to this area and we're moving down. So we're probably gonna meet them with that fleet, which isn't a grace because this fleet is not that big. A couple battleships and a cruiser against their fleet, which is quite significant here. Uh, again, two battleships, seven heavy cruisers, 13 light cruisers, 19 torpedo boats. That's going to be a force to be reckoned with next turn. Tensions have increased again with the Austro-Hungarians for the our presence in the Caribbean. Okay. Uh-oh. And here is this battle. That's a lot of ships we're going to have to take out. This might be a two-part episode because this might take a while. Let's get after it. Okay, here we go. Start battle. There's our two battleships and the Quincy over there. Smoke spotted to the north. So straight ahead of us. We're going to give the order. We're going to turn like so. We're doing 17 knots. Not very fast. Zoom over here to the Quincy. And we'll also give it a little bit of a turn. So if they're out there, I definitely want to keep them at arm's length for sure. Hopefully we don't lose these three ships. Uh, if we do, we're gonna go down uh, swinging for sure. Let's speed up time. All right, there we got something off in the distance. We have no idea what it is. Let's zoom over there really quick, see if we can see what it is. Yeah, it looks like one of the heavy cruisers for sure, followed by another heavy cruiser. I'm guessing that's a heavy cruiser. Yep, we wanna give them a good broadside. We're actually gonna turn a little more, not much, just a little more. We wanna give them that good broadside so all of our guns can come to bear. Uh, almost right away. It looks like we've got some more ships over there. It's the old design too. Just taking a look at it. I don't think it got refit. Same with this one. Oh, this is our, our new one. The New Hampshire. It's the new Idaho class. Alright, someone open up. Did I hear someone shoot? We've got some smoke over there too. I'm going to go ahead and have him start smoking as well. i to lay down that little bit of cover smoke screen. I'm going to be kind of speedy and quick with him. He can do 21 knots, so I'm going to try and like circle the them maybe we'll see we use them more as a distraction hopefully the battleships can uh engage from a distance and really lay a hurting on them i'm actually going to spread this out to normal as well i'm not going to change the group leader on avoid avoid torpedoes perfect i'm not setting anything yet and the reason why is because I don't know what we're going to be shooting at first. There we go. We've opened up. Wow, that's a long shot. Those shells went into stratosphere. What ship are they shooting at? This lead ship? Yeah. So apparently when I'm over there and I right click to move the camera around, if I have a ship selected, it will make them turn, which is what it's supposed to do. I need to remember to not have a ship selected when I do that. That's why we did a little bit of an S curve there, unfortunately. The Quincy is opening up. It's five inch guns. And I just did it again with that ship. Looks like a little torpedo boat. Maybe a coastal uh, cruiser. Yeah, I right clicked again with that ship. There you go, these ships are getting pretty close. Hopefully we can take them out relatively quickly. Those heavy steaming hard too. Oh boy, probably trying to cut our tail. 
going to cut in here with uh, Quincy, kind of come up along this side of them. I'm not seeing the rest of the fleet. I don't know where they're at. This is not enough ships. Now that is not a battleship. Here we go. New Hampshire opened up with its 5-inch guns, its 6-inch guns, and its 10-inch guns at this point. Those boats are getting kind of kind of close. Same with the uh, Virginia. We have done a little bit of damage to one of the ships. There it is. 5-inch gun. And it got a partial penetration. The rest of the ships coming in the in the view back here. Yeah, that's a that's a carrier. Or not a carrier, a cruiser. Heavy cruiser. Boy, and it is moving too. Look at that. Holy cow. Alright, guys. Vision two. I need you to focus all of your fire right there. If you can. Quincy, you're doing a good job so far. Let's see what you're up against. Looks like you got a heavy cruiser and maybe a Oh, that that's a heavy cruiser. That's gotta be a light cruiser, maybe. Heavy cruiser. We're looking at, uh, oh, at max, what is that, like four inches of armor. So we're going to need to switch to auto piercing, armor piercing. And I want you to start engaging this light cruiser, actually, then we're going to switch to HE for that guy. Hopefully you can get him sunk. We're going to turn away a little bit. I don't want to get too close to the rest of these guys. I'm going to actually come back towards the battleships a little bit. We kind of left the battleships a little too far behind for my comfort. Actually, this ship, go ahead and main guns, armor piercing. I want you to take out that guy there. This ship, Hampshire, go armor piercing. Actually, no, I want you to stay HE and yeah, take him out. Ooh, taking some hits. That's not good. We had to slow down for this turn and of course had to show him our butt. That's not good. We're not getting the hits that we need either. You have some flooding and fire. Not good, not good. A damage damage control crews get to your stations. Boy, that ship is not looking good, is it? There we go. We're getting some of that five inch action from the Virginia on this uh, heavy cruiser here. It does carry torpedoes, so I definitely want to make sure that we stay out of that torpedo arc with my battleships. We're gonna kind of pass Come on, turn, th turn this way. There we go. Good hits. Good hits. Oh, yeah. Oh, excellent. Excellent. First casualty. Going to the bottom. Very nice. Okay. Our piercing switch to HE. I want you on HE. Take out this uh, light cruiser here. Go. Got the rest of their fleet kind of circling around behind us. Time to start turning up and getting more of a broadside. I don't want them to cross our T. I don't want them to cross our back. The Quincy, I'm having turn kind of this way and follow along the uh, battleship's route here. In fact, turn tight. It's a steady stream of lead, steel, and explosives heading towards that light cruiser. Look at that. Yeah. Get some. Get some. It's got to hit him. That'd be great. Okay, we got our light cruiser. He's turning around. Going to be following these battleships as we try to keep them at arm's length and encircle them. Okay, I see that we're starting to get a lot of partial pin on the main deck and the main belt here, so I'm actually going to switch this up. Well, that was with its 5-inch, though, so... What are they shooting for the 5-inch? Armor piercing, so there's not really much we could do about it. Um, hopefully they start causing a little more damage. That's kind of strange here. I'm looking at this ship. The, like, the main deck is only 0.2 inches thick. And the main belt's two inches thick. Yeah, our guns should be able to handle that pretty easily. Well, okay, 100 yards. They're not quite that far away. Where are we at? This cruiser here is coming in hot. Hopefully that doesn't cause us a problem. We have a battleship over here too. And uh, I'm a little bit concerned about that battleship. We have another one over here. So I definitely don't want to send the Quincy in to do a torpedo run on that without being distracted by another battleship. It's going to be a battleship on battleship for sure. But uh, Quincy's got torpedoes. And torpedoes are like a death sentence to a battleship. There's that battleship shooting its big guns at us. That would suck really bad if they actually connected. Let's see, what, what do we go? Oh, that engine is down. Nice. I don't know what actually hit it. But it's got some 11.5 inch guns. Uh, they can do a lot of damage. Got like, some 10 inch guns. A bunch of fours and twos and threes it looks like armor piercing target that ship i want that ship gone i'm sure uh go ahead and switch targets please same with the quincy switch targets we need to get a little bit of distance here 
from the fleet. They're kind of in the middle, and they're they're faster than us, so they can close that gap pretty quick. And I want to get some distance. We need to just straighten out and get away from them for a little bit. Then we can turn back in, kind of, and, and re-engage with broadsides. Took a little damage there. There's a Virginia open up at the five-inch guns. Like they're probably not going to do much damage. Yeah, partial pin. The five-inch guns. I kind of know that those five-inch guns aren't going to do much against some heavy armor. Not until we get some better uh, projectiles, but I do like the five-inch guns. There's something about them. Love to hit them with those 10-inch guns. Let's see. We're looking at main belt of 11.3 inches. And our 10-inch guns at this distance of... What is that? Four and a half kilometers, five kilometers. It can do 15.9, so we should be able to do it. Oh, no! We lost to Quincy. I'm sorry, Quincy. So it's just all battleship now. Those were really close. That was really close. We're one for one so far, but uh, we're vastly outnumbered. Hopefully this Idaho-class battleship can withstand some punishment here. Everybody seems to be shooting at it. You know what? Switch targets. Why don't you switch targets as well? Switch back to auto. Nice. Good hit. Good hit. With its 10-inch gun. Yeah. Maybe I should keep him on there. That might be sinking. Yeah, it's sinking. It's going down. We're going to sink a battleship. Scream over here real fast. Watch this ship go down. Come on. Still dangerous. Oh, it's going down, though. 5%. That's what you get for sinking my light cruiser. I'm ready for this, uh, this light cruiser here to go away. He's banking hard. A decent hit. Didn't do much damage. That was a partial pin. There we go. Good hits. But again, didn't do anything. Set it on fire. Uh-oh. We're on fire. I forgot that uh, I set them to, to auto, but they were shooting HE at this light cruiser, which does have some armor. And that's why we weren't causing any damage. Oh. Oh, don't turn. Again, we just... That bounced. Is that a ricochet? The broadside, and we're getting a ricochet like that or something? And that was a... I think that was a AP round. How is this ship still alive? That's what I want to know. There we go. All right, circle around this way. Pick your targets. And let them auto-select their targets. There we go. Good hits. Good hits. Nice and clumped up like this. Aim at one, you might hit two of them. Nice. Good hits. Good hits. Good hits. Oh, yeah. Oh, they destroyed a torpedo. Causing massive damage. Nice. Torpedo detonation. There we go. Good hits. Good hits. Yeah, you got his number now. New Hampshire just raining it in. Nice. Come on. Yeah. Get him. New Hampshire switching targets, maybe? Nope. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's going down. Thinking. Goodbye. All right. Let's check our perspective here. Okay, we need to turn in a little more. I want to keep that broadside, but I also want to keep a distance. I'm kind of chasing us in a circle. I have that battleship here to be worried about as well. And there it is. Very odd battleship with those big old turrets on the sides like that. In fact, the New Hampshire is shooting at this guy here. This little, uh, little cruiser and other ships as well. This little cruiser is pretty fast. Doing 20.5 knots and out those five inch guns. Oh, there we go. Got a little bit of a little bit of damage. Lost a couple crewmen. Oh yeah, good hits. They're doing so well with their accuracy a little bit ago, and now it's just kind of fallen off the table. I'm not sure what's changed. When we sunk that ship a few minutes ago, it just we hammered it almost immediately. And now we can't hit the same size ship the about the same distance. Oh, there we go. A little bit of flooding, a little over penetration. Oh, come on. So close. There we go. Got a little bit of damage to this one here. Got some flooding, got some fire. It looks like its rudder is out. We got a little more flooding, got a little over penetration again. Captain is deciding to use those AP rounds. I did leave them on auto, letting them decide what rounds and what ships to engage first. I'm just kind of steering them and watching the show. It looks like they all pop smoke, trying to evade us a little bit. We, of course, do not have that ability. Probably going to degrade our accuracy a little bit. There we go. We got that one down. Right on. 
Keep engaging. Picking them off one at a time. We might actually end up winning this battle again. Last time something like this happened, it was a the battleship Oregon and a torpedo boat going up against a not this big of a, or powerful of a fleet of the Spanish, but uh, it was still a lot of ships, and we were able to win. That was a few episodes ago. Go check it out if you have not seen that one. It was a pretty epic battle. So, looks like we are uh, we might pull this one out as well with just two remaining battleships. Unfortunately, we, we did lose the, uh, the Quincy, which was one of our light cruisers. Oh, good hits. Good hits. Yeah, we got that torpedo detonation on this on this ship. Yeah, hopefully that causes a lot more damage and flooding. We can get that ship sunk and sent to the bottom. It's been several minutes since uh, we've actually had any kind of good hits. That was a very good hit for us. There we go. We got some flooding over penetration there. Like he's, he's banking hard. I got that flooding filling up from the bow. You can see right up here. Oh, add some insult to injury. Yeah, destroyed that main gun. There we go. Engine is out. Oh, yes. Main tower penetration. Very good. Some hits over here. It's getting some flooding back. Huh? And some buoyancy back. They got their damage control pumping out some of that water. That's not good for us. Oh, good hits. Good hits. They are nice and bunched up there. Yeah. Got all that water pumped out, looks like. That's not great. Oh, good hits. Not to have a collision here. Oh, he's going to miss. He's going to cut behind. Got some heavy flooding on this ship. Looks like it might go down. One can only hope. Yeah, it's going down. There it goes. All right. Five ships to go. Five against two. Still not great odds, but we are kicking their butts. Of course, we still do have that battleship to contend with as well. So far, we've just been picking off their cruisers. Thought they had some torpedo boats, but they might have bugged out before we even got close to them. Which is a shame, because their uh, torpedo boats might have turned the tide of this battle. If they would have came up on us and slammed their torpedoes into us, sinking our battleships. You saw how fast that cruiser went away. Without these battleships and that cruiser getting sunk so fast, uh, we would have lost this war, or this battle. But I honestly think they, ooh, they sent their uh, torpedo boats out of the area, what I'm guessing. Okay, we need to focus on you. Let's consolidate our fire. Focus on one ship at a time. Let's just get them done. Just start knocking them down. Okay, the Virginia keeps sinking all the shells, like, right in this area. At what point, as the fire director, do you say, add 50? You know? Like, just aim a little bit further. And they're all just, like, right off the bow. Uh-oh. That was a bad hit. That was a bad hit. We are on fire. That is not good. We need to turn a little bit. Kind of get into our... Behind us a little bit here. How we doing? We are on fire. That is not good. There we go. Flash fire. Good job. Good job. Outstanding. That's another ship going to the bottom. Let's see. Focus fire on that ship again. Everyone. Good job. Excellent. Whoa. What's going on here? I lost I'm losing control. Oh, uh oh, something's going on with my my controls here. I can't seem to move around the map. It's like getting stuck. I don't know what that was all about. We might have a collision almost. That's so cool. You can see the oil in the water. The ship is not doing well. It has seen better days, and I'm hoping that it won't ever see sunlight again. We need to send it to the bottom. And three, two, one. There it goes. Right on. Take out that ship. I like to see that sinking, sinking, less red. It is no longer a fair fight. We are definitely winning this fight. They went from having the advantage with the number of ships to losing this battle. Good job. Good hits. More flooding. There we go. Watch those. Watch these bulkheads fill up. They're not going to be able to get that flooding under control in time. They're listing over real hard. Oh, so close. So close. Goodbye. Right. You can see my face. I got a grin from ear to ear. Two ships to go, and one of them's a battleship. This is an epic battle. One for the history books for sure. Nice. Good hits. I think they were all shooting at this guy, and it was just happened to be in the crossfire. Smoke seems to be lasting a long time. I'm getting a little worried that he's getting a little close to our uh, ships here with those torpedo range. Hoping that we start hitting them here real soon, because we need to. <laughs> 
Come on. Come on, he's almost point blank range. Come on now. Okay, we're entering his torpedo range. This is not good. We are well within his torpedo range. He could launch a, launch a torpedo at any time. I'm looking like a hawk looking for that torpedo. You know what? I'm going to maneuver him away. Ah, come on. No, no, no. I need to split him up. I can't get him to turn. Turn your flipping ship. Not you. Gotta pause it. Detach. Thank you. I was able to get him detached. There we go. Good hits. Good hits. Right when I got him detached. There we go. I don't think he got his torpedo off. Go ahead and reattach him. Okay, we got one battleship to go. That was intense. and We took a lot of damage. Actually, not too bad, all things considered. I was really worried about a torpedo coming in, but I don't think he actually sh shot one. If he did, I didn't see it, and it didn't obviously hit me. So, okay, what are you shooting HE for? You need to be shooting armored piercing, pretty much everything. We don't want to light fires, we want to introduce flooding. Yeah, you know, you just got to add just a little bit of uh, distance on there. You know, aim for over here. Got some hits. We need to cause a lot more. Oh, there we go. I was just gonna say we need to cause a lot more damage, but we just we just caused a lot of damage. Main belt pin for uh, 1,060 damage points. That's awesome. Took out his engine. Got some fire and flooding going on. Of course, that was done by our 10-inch gun. There we go. Got some hits. Gonna check our angle here. Now we need to turn in a little more. Oh wow, she is okay. From that other angle, it looked like it was uh, really getting heavy in the ass in there. It looks like it is. It does have a list. It is not doing well. I have a lot of flooding going on. It wants me to end the battle. That's not happening. We are finishing this. They started this war. They attacked me and they are going to pay the price. There we go. Wow. But there we have it. They sent how many ships? They sent 10 ships after us. We had three. We lost one. They lost all ten. No survivors. Now I did mention earlier about the torpedo boats. I don't see them here. So we lost 256 crew. Uh, they lost 11 ships. Excuse me, I can't count. They lost 11 ships. We lost the one. We got a shit ton of victory points. They didn't. And we, of course, won this. Let's take a look at our ship stats. There you have it. Let's go ahead and exit. We are winning. The Chinese Empire desperately asks us for a peace treaty. Should we accept it? Hell no. We didn't start this war. There we go. Too bad we lost to Quincy, though. That's all right. Oh, we have another battle. Well, I think this is going to be a battle for part two of this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly did, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.